So Oregon men's basketball is into the offseason here after a fantastic run to win the Pac-12 tournament, win an opening round game against South Carolina because Dana Altman aligns Rubik's Cubes and doesn't lose in the first round, and then should have beaten Creighton, didn't, all right, offseason time. So biggest name that everyone's watching right now is KJ Evans, but I think another name to discuss is Bam Tracy. And, you know, as I understand it, no one's made an official announcement about whether or not they'll be returning to the Ducks aside from Jackson Shellstad, which is, of course, a great start. He was the Ducks' third leading scorer this year, starting point guard, and is going to be the point guard for the foreseeable future for Oregon, and is just crazy, crazy talented and explosive. I just love everything about Shellstad. He is everything that we hoped he would be, and I think he is going to continue to get better and better, much like Peyton Pritchard did, and who, of course, is uh, his good friend and uh, idol as a basketball player, hence the number three. But Jadrian Tracy, or Bam Tracy, as as he's been come to know, is someone who I very much hope returns to the Ducks. So he came in from uh, the JUCO ranks uh, ahead of this past season. And, you know, sometimes he came off the bench and he was really in the starting lineup down the stretch quite a bit for the Ducks. And, you know, he, he is not a lockdown defender. Uh, I talked about that in the reaction show to, you know, the the Creighton loss and kind of breaking down that whole sequence. He, he is not... A, a plus defender. And usually Dana Altman has got a lot of really good defenders. But I think for Bam Tracy, there are a couple things that, that he brings that make me want to have him back, even though he's not locking it down at that end of the floor, which is a big part of what Dana Altman wants to do, to be sure. Number one, he can shoot. And I thought that Dana Altman and his staff did a phenomenal job the, uh, the, this past offseason of addressing what was a huge need. They didn't have enough shooting. They they just didn't. But they brought in Shellstad, who can shoot. Kuznard got better. He increased his three-point percentage. I think he was around 35%. That was a career high. They brought in Bam Tracy and Brennan Rigsby got back to what he you know is kind of capable of as a shooter this past year. He was really cold the second half of the year. Also someone that has said he wants to return to the Ducks, and I hope that uh, he does because I like having him off the bench. But I think Bam Tracy did a great job of being the shooter. You know, at uh, at the junior college, is the name of it is escaping me right now. He was about a 42% three-point shooter. He, he was somewhere in the low to mid 40s, and he had a good year shooting the three. And if you're Oregon, you got to have those guys. And look, do I automatically think Bam Tracy should be the starting three next year for the Ducks? Not necessarily. I, I think if either Tracy or Keyshawn Bartholomew or maybe Brandon Rigsby were, you know, a, a sixth man off the bench, that would be a testament to Oregon having a truly deep lineup. Like, I hope Mookie Cook can realize his full potential and be a starting caliber three. But at the same time, he's going to be coming off an injury, won't be tremendously experienced because he's barely played, so he might have to work his way into the rotation, kind of like Shellstad did, right? Shellstad came off the bench to start the year, and as it progressed, it became very obvious this guy's the starting point guard, and that's where Oregon was by the end of the season. So I think that Bam Tracy could start at the three, because you know we saw him do that and have some nice games and do good things for the Ducks over the course of this season. And as Mookie Cook adapts to the college game, he becomes a starting three and Tracy can slide to the bench. So that's the other reason, uh, or one of the other reasons that that I like him. And the other thing is he's got size. You know, he's about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and Oregon doesn't have, um, at least on, on this roster right now, I'm curious to see how they kind of attack this in the off season. They don't have a lot of size on the wing. They've got good size with their guards, but they don't have guys that are like between 6'6 and 6'8 or 6'9 playing on the wing, right? KJ Evans is, I think, listed at 6'9. He plays the four, sometimes a smaller five. And Folly Dante, Nate Biddle, and Mo Diawara, those are all seven footers that you have at the five spot. And and that's great. And Oregon certainly will need to add a big uh, or two for, for depth in the front court. But they don't have a lot of guys. Cook is six seven. Tracy, I think, is listed at six foot six. They don't have guys like that. You know, playing uh, with a three guard lineup is okay. But if you think about the best Dane Altman team, that Final Four caliber team, or not caliber, they literally were in the Final Four national championship caliber team. It was Peyton Pritchard, who's you know pretty small at point guard, and Casey Benson, who's also not very big at point guard. And then you had Dylan Ennis, who was about six four. Tyler Dorsey was six five. Brooks was six foot seven. 
That that was a greater progression of size. Jordan Bell was playing, you know, a small ball center at 6'9, but really they like playing Bell at the five and Chris Boucher at the four, and Boucher was 6'11. So Dana Altman's teams have always, I think, been at their best when they've got sufficient size and and defense on the perimeter and on the interior. And I think that Tracy, you know, can get better defensively and he, he just brings a size and rebounding component and shooting that, that makes me look at him and go, yeah, I, I want that guy to return. I want him back on Oregon's team. I think he can be a valuable piece for, for Oregon as they try to, you know, just be an at-large team in the Big Ten next year. And, you know, certainly the Big Ten has got a lot of really good teams. It, it'll be tougher than what the, the Pac-12 was this past season. But, you know, I don't think it's a conference where Oregon goes in and they're at some huge disadvantage. Like, they're clearly the best basketball program or at least the best basketball team from this from this year going into the Big 10, right? Danny Sprinkles at Washington now, he's a very good coach. He I, I have no doubt that Danny Sprinkle will get Washington to an NCAA tournament level eventually. I don't know how quickly. It was kind of a unique situation last year where he brought over guys from Montana State and got the most out of them and brought in a, a former Oregon player, uh, Isaac Johnson, I think, was one once upon a time a duck very briefly, and he was a big part of that uh, Utah State team that also got to the round of 32. Uh, Sprinkle will do a good job, but Andy Enfield at USC, I think, is expected to be the next coach at SMU, which is weird, very, very weird. And then you've got Mick Cronin at UCLA. I think he'll bounce back and be fine. Cronin's a very good coach. So... Oregon's in a good position amongst the newcomers. And then you look at the Big Ten, you go, okay, Illinois is very good with Brad Underwood. Matt Painter at Purdue, again, a, a very good, consistent, steady presence as a basketball coach. And I, I think that for the Ducks, they are able to put themselves into the upper echelon with the Purdue's and Illinois and Wisconsin's if you know everybody comes back and you add the right pieces. But I think having Bam Tracy there would would be helpful. He's also got, you know, they call him Bam because he's capable of throwing down. He's not an unathletic guy. So size, athleticism, shooting, can score a little bit inside and out, uh, and just, you know, a catch and shoot, knockdown sort of guy. Every team needs somebody like that, right? I think of that Peyton Pritchard team that didn't get to make a run in the NCAA tournament because it got canceled due to COVID. Anthony Mathis, I, I think, is what Bam Tracy kind of is. Not necessarily a plus defender, but gives you some size, little athleticism, and a healthy amount of shooting. I think Mathis was a little bit you know, more of a volume scorer than Tracy, but Tracy had a 20-point game against Stanford, and I think he had six or seven games with uh, 14 points or more. So I want to see him return to the Ducks, uh, absolutely. And you know, Oregon definitely needs to add. You got to find somebody, and there are a lot of players in the portal. There are a lot of players in the portal. I'll touch on that in just a sec, but you got to replace Kuznard. You got to replace Dante. You got to replace Aquendo. So those are your guys that you know played a, a key role this year, Kuznard and Dante especially. It's losing a lot, but I think the core infrastructure to build an at-large tournament team is certainly there. Make a Final Four run? Eh, we'll see. We'll see what sorts of players they're, they're able to add. But on that note, a lot of players are in the transfer portal because it opens during March Madness because the college sports calendar makes no sense. Nobody thinks about these things. They just, they're like the Joker, you know? He's like a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do it if I caught one. You know, I just do things. Let me know what you think of that impression below. But I, I think that's where the calendar is at for college football and basketball. And a lot of players are in the portal. And I think it's a good sign that none of the Oregon players that are thinking about returning are in the transfer portal, especially KJ Evans, right? Who Whose comment was, you know, generating some headlines here and there about whether or not he, you know, will come back, future undecided and everything of that sorts. But he's not in the transfer portal yet. And this kind of feels like the time where everyone is putting their name in. So, you know, we'll wait on official word and, and certainly hope that these guys come back because I think, you know, the core is there, the experience, the belief, the culture, everything I think is there to set up for a successful season next year. You've just got to make the right offseason moves. You, you've got guys coming from low and mid or even high major schools that are able to come to your roster and contribute right away. And you got to find those sorts of guys. You, you need a, a shooting guard like Jermaine Kuznard, who can hit threes, can score, and can also defend. Kuznard was a trifecta in that sense. And he was huge for Oregon all season long, especially down the stretch. Not an easy guy to replace. And look, I don't think you have to go find someone who's going to you know, average 36 points per game in two NCAA tournament games or have to find an Enfali Dante type 
But certainly you got to find some real production, some proven production. It's out there in the portal. I think Dana, with the momentum they created with this uh, round of 32 run in the NCAA tournament, I think he'll be able to go get it. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day and go Ducks.